Sunrise Church, we are so excited to worship with you in this song. We hope that whatever you're doing, you're able to take some time and just really press in, no matter where you are, if you're in your living room, if you're watching it on your phone, if you're listening to it in the car, whatever, let's just take a moment to really press in and worship. Hey Sunrise, 2023 is almost to an end and it has been an incredible year as a church. We have seen God do 
new thing after new thing in the lives of people all throughout the year. We have studied the Word of God together. Our kids have memorized portions of the Bible together in our kids' ministry. We have seen God do what only God does. And all of it is made possible by the grace of God and your generosity as a church. And I actually wanna take just a moment as we kind of ring in this new year together. And I wanna celebrate some of the things that God did through His grace and His goodness and through your generosity as a church. This year, we went under the sea with Ariel as our Sunrise Performing Youth put on The Little Mermaid. We actually then stayed under the sea for our VBS with about 700 plus kids as we got to shine that light here in our community together. It was an incredible summer together as we were in the Word and serving as a church united in those efforts. We then went back here later on in the year and our Sunrise Performing Youth took us down that yellow brick road to Oz and we got to see hundreds of families come to this church and experience the theater arts here in a way that uplifts the name of Jesus. What an incredible opportunity we had and we're looking forward to doing more of that in the new year. In fact, we are hoping and praying that God will continue to allow us to connect with more families through these ministries in 2024 as we continue to honor Him with what He has given us. We saw 50 plus students go to camp this year. Because of your generosity, we were able to do that. And some of those students made decisions to follow Jesus. Some of them even came back and got baptized. And speaking of baptisms, we baptized person after person after person. It was quite the run this fall of baptisms, even as we wrapped up our Christmas series with one final baptism for the year. Only God does that. We served over 40 families Thanksgiving dinners this year. And on Thanksgiving Day, we took over 150 Thanksgiving plates to widows, to shut-ins, and those in need in our community. You did that, church. You did that. And we get to celebrate that together. We have upgraded some things in our auditorium so that our worship experiences as we lead into the new year will be as excellent as we can possibly make them because we believe the best thing we can do as a church is to create an environment every week where people of all ages and stages, families at all phases can come, worship God together and learn what it means to know and follow Jesus together. And we get to be a part of what God is doing in all of this. We even wrapped up our year with our CHP, California Highway Patrol Toy Drive, what they call Chips for Kids. And this year, we gave Christmas to over 500 children in our community. Wow, wow, what a blessing to be able to do that. And we give all praise to God. As I said, none of this is possible without the grace and goodness of God and the generosity of His people. Church, we look back on 2023 with gratitude and with celebration. And we look ahead to 2024 with excitement and expectation. So I would ask this, if you would consider helping us finish the year strong here at Sunrise with your continued generosity, because we believe that lives are changed when love is given away, but you cannot love without giving and serving. Generosity and service and compassion are all products of love. And not only that, but as it honors God, it helps people learn what it means to know and follow Him. Everything we've been able to celebrate in 2023 is all rooted 
in our mission of pointing people to Jesus and teaching them what it means to know and follow Him with their lives. That is why we give here at Sunrise. So I want to invite you, maybe for the end of the year, it might be the first time that you have ever given to Sunrise Church. Maybe now is the time for you to take that step, even in your journey with Jesus, but also to be a part of what God is doing. Maybe it's the end of the year and you want to give a special year end offering to continue to support the mission of the gospel here at Sunrise Church. We would invite you to do that. There are all sorts of ways to do that. You can mail any checks to the church. You can give online, sunrise.net. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always call us, email us. We would love to get you any information on any ways that you can take any next step here at Sunrise Church. Church, 2023 is coming to an end. We're turning that chapter over and we're moving on to 2024. But we don't do that without celebrating and we don't do that without grateful hearts. So thank you. Thank you for being the church this year. Thank you for giving toward the mission of God here at Sunrise Church. People are taking steps in their journey with Jesus because of your generosity, because of your service. So thank you. And would you pray with us and be excited with us as we look ahead to 2024 together as a church. Our very first Sunday together in January, we are having a Vision Sunday. And we wanna share with you what we believe God has in store for Sunrise in 2024. It will be an absolutely great weekend. Be here, bring some people with you so we can all learn together what we believe God has ahead and get excited to contribute to that mission together. As we ring in 2024, we wanna remind you, be in prayer for people in your lives. We forget so often because we get so caught up in doing the things we do. Even as we celebrate what God is doing and, and look ahead to what God will do, all of that, all of that is centered on God and people. So as you ring in the new year, I would encourage you to do so with celebration, with gratitude, lifting up those who continue to live alongside of you. Because at the end of the day, all that matters is God and people, and we're all in this together. So Sunrise, thank you for a great 2023, and pray with us as we get excited for a new 2024. Happy New Year. Hello Sunrise, Happy New Year's Eve morning. I hope that your Christmas was a really good one this year. I love the Christmas season. Christmas morning at our house has looked very similar each year. The first thing Jen and I do is to walk down the stairs, turn on the Christmas tree lights, and, and look at the gifts under the tree. We have each had years of plenty, where the presents surround the tree stacked one on top of the other, and years where we've had very little. 
and there was just a gift or maybe two each. But regardless, it is always a morning filled with anticipation, waiting for our kids to open the gifts that we've given them. After the lights are in and gone the tree, it's time to go and get a cup of coffee because you know you stayed up late building bikes, setting up doll houses, arranging the packages just right for that maximum impact when the kids walk in. Christmas morning has arrived. The gifts are displayed perfectly. The first sips of coffee have been taken. Everyone is gathered around the tree. I'm excited to start watching our kids just tear the wrapping paper off their gifts to see what they've been given. But it's at that moment when everyone is excited, when the anticipation is high, that we come to a stop. And we read the Christmas story found in Luke chapter 2. And then we take some time to remember and to share what we're thankful for in the last year. There were even a number of years when we sang happy birthday to Jesus. When the kids were younger, I'm sure that they were thinking, man, really, do we have to? We've been listening to messages about Jesus being born all month. We heard these very verses read at the candlelight service at church. Isn't that enough? Why do we have to stop and read them again right now? Can we just get to the presents? Opening the presents is exciting, but it's so important that we stop and take time to remember what Christmas is all about. Otherwise, our kids would rip the gifts open, go through their day, and they'd forget. They would forget the reason why we have gathered together to celebrate, and so we stop and we remember the reason for the season. Why do I share that story with you this morning? Because in these hectic days, when we have so many things that demand our attention, it's important for us to look for moments throughout the year to stop and to remember what God has done in our lives. And so what better time to stop and remember what God has done than as we end one year and we look towards the next, than as we end one season and we look towards the season ahead. God makes the importance of remembering what He has done so clear in the book of Joshua. You see, after 400 years, God has rescued Israel from slavery in Egypt. Most of you remember the 10 plagues and eventually God parting the Red Sea so that they could escape the Egyptian army. For reasons I won't go into this morning, they spent 40 years wandering in the desert waiting to enter the promised land. And now the time had finally come. And as soon as the feet of the priests that were carrying the Ark of the Covenant touched the water, Joshua 3.16 tells us that the waters coming down from above stood up and rose in a heap far away upstream and that the people passed through the Jordan to the opposite side. They finally stepped into the promised land. Can you imagine that moment? They had spent 40 years wandering in the desert, eating mostly manna and drinking water. And now they had finally made it to the promised land. A land that they had already seen was flowing with milk and honey. Can you imagine the anticipation, the excitement of standing on the threshold of the promise God had given them so very long ago? And then it says in Joshua 4, 1 through 3, that when the whole nation was finally across, God spoke to Joshua and told them to select 12 men from the people, one from each tribe, and tell them from the middle of the Jordan to take from the feet of the priests that were standing firm in the center 12 stones and carry them across with you and set them down in a place where they were going to camp that night. Before fulfilling the promise that he had been waiting generations to fulfill, before the Israelites were able to tear open their gift of the promised land, God had to stop them so that they might remember the incredible things that he had done for them so that they would remember and so the future generations would see those stones and ask what they were all about. And when they asked, they would get to hear the story of how God had brought Israel out of Egypt and into that promised land. They would be told about the 10 plagues, the parting of the Red Sea, the destruction of Pharaoh's army, manna from heaven and water from a rock. Sandals that didn't wear out and God speaking from the mountaintop. And the list goes on. God had Joshua pick one man 
from each of the 12 tribes to grab a stone from the midst of the Jordan so that every tribe was a part of the memory of that occasion. He sent them back into their past, saying, I want you to walk back into the river you just walked out of and pick up a stone where the Ark of the Covenant once stood. Pick up that stone and carry it out of the river and place them as a memorial, a reminder of all that I've done to bring you into the promised land. This wasn't the first time that God had told Israel to remember what he had done. Moses told them in Deuteronomy 5, 15 to remember that they were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord, your God, had brought you out with his mighty hand and his outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord, your God, he said, has commanded you to observe the Sabbath. But we see in Psalm 106 that they didn't take the time to remember. And after God had rescued them from Egypt, drowning the entire Egyptian army in the process, Psalm 106, 12 and 13 says this, When they had believed his promises, they sang his praises. But they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his plan to unfold. Like Israel, we're quick to forget what God has done in our lives. Like Israel, we often don't remember God's many kindnesses, his mercies that are new every day. Like Israel, we can soon forget and grow impatient in our waiting, especially when we're in the middle of trials and suffering. With all the distraction in our lives, the social media, the email, the smartphones, bring binging shows on TV and on and on, with all of the distractions in our lives, how much more important is it for us to look for the moments to stop and remember what God has done in our lives today so that we don't forget? How many things has God done this year that he might want you to go back and remember? That he might want you to go back and pick up a stone from that memory and place it in a pile as a memorial so that you don't forget. Those memories are only preserved when we take the time to remember. So how do we do that? And more importantly, why should we do that? Well, Remembering what he has done for us in the past helps us to see how far that we've come. It's so easy to feel like you're on that endless road and that nothing changes. I live with my son Thomas day in and day out. He gets on the treadmill almost every day. At the doctor's appointment a little while ago, they had him jump on the scale and he had lost 80 pounds. Now he looks great. But when you look at a picture of him from two years ago and compare it to how he looks today, he looks fantastic. You realize how different he looks today than he did then. And life can be like that for us as well. It's easy to lose sight of how far we've come. But when we look back and remember what God has been doing in our life two, three, five years, and then look at where we are today, we can see more clearly how far we have come in our walk with the Lord. Another reason to remember what he has done for us in the past is that it helps us to trust that God will meet us in our present circumstances as well. In other words, looking back helps us to move forward. If he was faithful, then he will be faithful again. It's in those low times it can be easy to give in to the worry, to the fear, to the despair, to the depression. But when we surrender our worry, our fear to God, and remember His faithfulness in the past, we can find the strength to get through the difficult season today. I remember the first time I bungee jumped, it was hard to take that first step of faith off that platform. It was a long way up. But once I had done it and I realized that the bungee cord wouldn't break, that it would actually stop me from falling, it was much easier to step off the platform the next time. Remembering what God has done for us in the past will give us the faith to take the next step to get through what we're currently going through. He was there for us then. He will be and is there for us now. And finally, remembering what he has done for us in the past becomes a testimony to those that will come after you. Continuing our story in Joshua 4, verses 20 and 24, it says, And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in the times to come, what do these stones mean? Then 
You shall let your children know Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over. And that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty and that they may fear the Lord your God forever. Now, be honest, when you hear that story, do you personally think, man, God is powerful. If he can do that for them, what can't he do for me? When you hear that story, does it instill any fear of the Lord in you? Does it inspire you to live lives that are holy, that are righteous, because you see in that story what a mighty God he is? For some of us, we would probably say, yes, yes, it does. But for many, we would say, you know, if I'm honest, it sounds a little far-fetched. Maybe he did those things back then, but I haven't seen him work that kind of power, display that kind of power in my life. What if the things that The thing that is missing in the story of God's presence and power becoming real, becoming personal for those God has placed in your life and for future generations isn't found in the pages of Scripture, but is actually found in what God has done in your life. Israel crossing the Jordan happened thousands of years ago. What if the bridge that God wants to use to help someone in your life today, as well as the future generations to come, your children, grandchildren, and beyond, What if that bridge that God wants to use in order for them to experience and know his love for them is actually found in what he has done in your life? Revelation 12, 11 tells us they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So literally there's victory for people today because of the blood of the lamb, meaning the finished work of Jesus on the cross and the word of your testimony. Your testimony serves as a bridge for people today, as well as the next generation, to take the events of the Bible from being stories about those people and their God to testimonies about you and your God. Remembering what he has done for you in the past becomes an encouragement to you and a testimony to those that will come after you. So as this year comes to an end, take a few minutes to remember what God has done in 2023. And as God moves in your life, find a way to memorialize it, to remember it, so that you won't follow the example of Israel in forgetting, but will instead be encouraged in your own life and will be be an encouragement to others for generations to come. Thank you for joining us this morning. We've talked about looking back and remembering. Next week is Vision Sunday. Scott and I will be sharing the vision God has given us for sunrise in 2024, where we are headed and why. I hope you'll join us next week at either 9 or 1030 as we share that vision. Have a safe and a happy new year. Thank you for joining us and I hope to see you next Sunday. God bless you.